Hey guys, Chris here, and welcome to my recap of Operation Heavy Metal. I wasn't able to watch the reveal live, but I was able to after work, and certainly, it looks like a great season is upon us once again. Uh, some stuff are questionable as always, but overall, it looks really fun. So kicking off this video, Operation Heavy Metal goes onto the test servers tomorrow, August 14th, and the release date is a few weeks later on Tuesday, August 29th. I gotta say, we're quite on a roll with these release dates because Dread Factor was in May, I believe, and this time it's in August, unlike September, so pretty early this around this time of year, which is pretty nice. Now moving on to the main stuff now, we have the new operator, Ram. She is the new Korean operator that is a part of Red Hammer, and is a 3 health 1 speed operator, and to combine with her kit, she also has the R4C and LMG-E as her kit, along with the Mark 1 9mm and the ITA-12S sidearm shotgun as her secondaries. Now with this, she also has stun grenades and hard breach charges to complete her set, but the main gadget here, by far, is the Boogie Auto Breacher, that name sounds so funny, but what it does, it basically runs along the floor, destroying it, and also whatever's in the way, like gadgets and shields. Overall, I really love her design, and the fact too that she has an R4C, with a 1.5x is cool too, and uh, I'm looking forward to trying her soon. Now moving on, we have the commendation system, and whilst this may look like a shitty comparison, it's kind of like the accolade system that the PlayStation 5 used to have. Basically, you know, if you're a good player that gives comms or spreading positivity in game, uh, you can get you know commended for that, which is nice, as you know that gets recognized. Now this is a part of the reputation system, and in the screenshot I'm showing on screen, or hopefully soon, uh, you can see that if you get a lot of these commendations, then you'll be on a streak. And as a little reward too, if you engage with that commendation system, you get a mid-season alpha pack drop of epic rarity, which is nice. But at the end of the season, the top 25 commended players actually get legendary packs, so... That's pretty cool in my opinion. You get rewarded for, you know, complimenting players, so pretty nice change. Reward ...and player cards. And for players who are on a streak, they will also receive an increase to their alpha pack drop roll rate at the end of every match they have whilst the streak is active. But the benefits aren't just for players on a streak. Every single player who is engaged with the commendation system will receive a mid-season alpha pack drop of epic rarity. In addition to that, the top 25% most commended players at the end of the season will receive an alpha pack drop of legendary status. Now, on to Quick Match 2.0 and a new arcade mode coming to the game. So this one is the questionable change I am talking about at the start of the video, Quick Match 2.0. So basically, they are changing Quick Match completely and making it more fast paced. Uh, you still get the three modes, Bomb, Hostage, and Secure Area. But in-game, they have changed it now so that reinforcements are preset, and so are rotation holes. And they also gave attackers 10 second protection, which, I mean, is good to prevent spawn peeking. And they are also changing the timing from prep phase to action phase, and also the matchmaking algorithm as well. Now along with this, they are changing the map pool too, which I honestly don't really like, because instead of having all the maps, Quick Match 2.0 will consist of maps like House, Clubhouse, Consulate, Bank, Chalet, Favela, Coastline, the new Tower rework, and Villa and Nighthaven Labs. But they will be increasing it in the future, which is good, but at the same time, it's like, why even change it, you know? But with this change, though, they have changed Unranked, or shall I say by its new name, Tactical. So basically it's the same game mode as usual, bomb, and basically no ranks, but but the two big changes that are coming is that they are removing map and operator bands, and with that they are also reducing the overtime round to just one, and it's also rumored that they are adding more maps into there, such as, you know, plane, yacht, basically some of the, let's just say missing maps from Quick Match 2.0, but it's not confirmed yet, maybe it will once they actually put it up on their website, but... Overall, this tactical game mode, it's actually giving me the vibes of Old School Siege, like 2017. Merely where you can play all the ops and all the maps without it being banned or so, so... Maybe I'll enjoy this then quick match, but I'll have to see how it all plays out in-game. Now, onto this new arcade mode, Weapon Roulette. 
Now you may think it's gun game from Call of Duty, but it's kind of not. It kind of is. But everybody does start with the same weapons, but it's based on time though. So one minute, everyone could be having the SMG-11, and another minute, everyone could be playing with Cali Sniper. Now I believe something like this was actually into the 2022 version of Mew Protocol, but I could be wrong. I, that's what my mind thinks about. But this game mode does seem very interesting though. <laughs> Definitely seems like one I'm gonna get mad at. <laughs> All right, on to balancing the section everybody loves and hates at the same time. So starting off small, uh, for Fuse, they actually have allowed them to place his cluster charges on shields, which is nice. But it also includes Osa shields. So you could technically do a Fuse and Osa strat, which is actually something that I want to see in game a lot now. <laughs> Uh, sticking with these small changes, Lesion, I don't think they mentioned it during the live stream, but Lesion's goo mines are no longer invisible, but they do have some increased damage. And along with that, he gets the super shorty, which is actually a surprise <laughs> to see. <laughs> now on to some of the bigger changes, Grim, our beloved B-man. This season includes part two of his rework, and basically his launcher is getting the change now, where you can bank those canisters off the wall and it allows you to fire his bees in tight spots. And basically it's an alternative firing mode, so you can choose between that or just the standard firing mode for his bees. Ah, now onto the biggest change for this, Frost. So of course when you get stuck in a frost mat as an attacker because you were busy not looking and paying attention, usually you have to rely on a teammate to pick you up. But now you can actually pull yourself out of that frost mat or you can, you know, wait for your teammate too. But you'll also be limping now. You know, you won't be scot-free where you can just run and stuff. You'll actually be limping, but also leaving a trail of blood as well, which allows for frost and other defenders to see where you are and where you're heading. Of course, this has been an interesting and controversial rework with the community because of how it is. Since uh, SI, I believe, when they revealed that. But I think, honestly, it'll be fine, in my opinion. Uh, honestly, we'll just have to see how it really plays out in most cases. Uh, but it seems very interesting. <laughs> now, lastly, before we actually get onto the last stuff, uh, a small tweak, too, is that shotguns will now be more precise when you're aiming in. And it will also be more destructive for rotate holes and such. So that's actually a very nice change. Very small, but very nice change. All right, so now on to the last things for this video. The new tutorials. Uh, these, I assume, will replace situations, unless those will be kept in. But they will consist of basics, attack, and defense sections. And they're basically self-explanatory. They basically teach you the mechanics of Siege and how to play. Uh, guided by Zero and Mira, as seen in this footage, which is honestly pretty nice. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's very good to see for newcomers, as Siege is... Definitely one of the games that, you know, has a very steep learning curve and at least it'll help newcomers learn the basics for Siege and, you know, do well when they actually go online. <laughs> now onto some quality of life changes. Uh, the free cam will now actually allow you to remove the HUD completely, thank god. You'll now be able to promote another person to squad leader or remove someone from the squad, so say like, if somebody's taking too long, you could just boot their ass out and get to playing, which is, I mean, it's happened many a times to us, you know, that one friend who takes so long. And the last of these changes is that you can actually read patch notes in game, which is a small thing, but it may come in handy sometimes, so that's neat. Oh, and there's also an elite skin for Thunderbird, which is actually out now by the time you see this video, which actually looks pretty nice and actually, you know, is accurate to her lore and not a crossover one for once. So thank God. <laughs> Alrighty, so that's all the stuff that you need to know for Operation Heavy Metal. There may be some small things I have left out that weren't mentioned in the reveal, and I apologize for that. But honestly, so far, it's looking pretty nice. And uh, I can't wait to try some of the things in there on the test server and once it goes live on the main build. I hope this recap helped you all who needed basically a quick recap on what's coming to the new season. And if it did, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe. And also maybe sharing it around to those people would be appreciated. And without further ado, I'll see you all into the next video. Take care.